Halo, hai, hey, halo, good evening, hi everybody, hi everyone, hi, okay, uh, good evening everybody and welcome to uh, this Saturday 30th of May's uh, Fuji Film presentation on um, you know how to up your game uh, on Instagram and of course you know how to shoot. You know to uh, up your game uh, basically with uh, fujifilm cameras so thank you so much for joining us and uh, i'd like to introduce to you guys our special guest uh evelyn you know yay Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm evelyn. Evelyn. Hi. Hi. thanks for joining everyone yeah great just Hi, like dinner and all ready to share our tips and tricks on photographing for instagram <laughs> okay yeah i mean uh well i mean today is already saturday so we have another like two more days you know before uh the uh finally the uh, what do you call the circuit breaker will be lifted and we are going to phase one so i'm kind of excited because you know at least uh we are moving towards 
being able to uh, go out again, you know, and also to see our friends and catch up with our, you know, our extended families, you know. And any plans for you, Evelyn, after, you know, are you going back to work, you know, instead of working from home? <laughs> Actually, to me, no difference, eh. Because uh, I've been working from home for, like, two plus months already. And in the first wow. month, after 2nd June, it's still the same. We still get to work from home. But the only difference I is I get to see my husband <laughs> because I haven't seen <laughs> okay, him for nice. a long time. Now I can okay, visit my in-law, so I can nice. see him as well. Yeah. That's nice. Other that's than nice. that, not much different. Do you have more nice. plans after second nice. June? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, for you guys who are joining us for the first time, okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining in, and uh, and uh, of course, uh, we are on. Uh, we are viewing this from Fujifilm X Singapore's uh, Facebook uh, page. Uh, we also have a uh, Fujifilm Club X uh, on Facebook as well. So, you know, you can always um, uh, sign in and join us there as well. On Instagram, we are on uh, Fujifilm SG. So uh, if, you are, if you have a Fujifilm, uh, sorry, if you have an Instagram uh, account, please join us and uh, click on like, and you can, uh, you know, follow on some of the posts uh, that uh, our photographers have been posting there, yeah? Okay, so uh, Evelyn, I'm sure everybody is a bit curious about you. So maybe perhaps you would like to give us a little introduction about yourself? Yeah, okay. So hello everyone again, I'm Evelyn. I'm a photography hobbyist. I first started photography when I was about, uh, about eight years ago when I had a blog shop. So I had to shoot for the blog shop and sometimes I double up as a model because budget, no money. Then after that, I first got uh, my more serious camera, which was the Fujifilm X100S. That was in 2013. Okay. I use it mainly for travel because really super compact and the quality is amazing. Then I okay. used it for a few years and just three years ago, I wanted to shoot more and experiment further. So I switched right. to the interchangeable lens system, the XT20. And uh, that was also the time when I first tried street photography three years ago, which was on okay. Fujifilm photo walk to Sentosa. And that's also yes, where that I first was, met I you. Yes, that was the time I met you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that was the time when I met you. And then, uh, yeah, so, so you know, I, I remember you as this uh, really enthusiastic person <laughs> who was like, you know, running around with a camera and trying to take photos and, and stuff. but. I mean, it's amazing that, you know, you have actually used uh, Fujifilm cameras for that long, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I, okay, the thing is, I didn't even know you have a, you once had a blog shop. Is it still, is it still active? <laughs> Don't have really, <laughs> because it's very taxing to manage a blog shop and a full-time job. So I, uh, I juggled okay. for a few years, then decided okay. I really cannot make it, because it's a lot of work to shoot, to I edit, see. and to procure the goods also. Yeah. But right now you're you're doing it for uh your this uh, uh personal uh what do you call it? your personal uh Instagram account right which is A V Chang yeah. you know I, I can see that yeah. you know you are doing you are doing your uh workout challenges and as well as you know uh these are videos and also for photos and of course you also manage another um similar uh, for travel you know lens go travel um account which uh which is quite mm -hmm. interesting as well. So you want to like share with us in terms of like, uh, how do you actually, you know, manage two accounts like that? Yeah, so I first started the personal account, but this account is also not my first Instagram account. It was after a phase in life. So after right. that phase in life, I wanted to start afresh by creating a new account. And the okay. Ace Chang okay. account actually has more personal things and also right. photos from my right. landscapes and travels. Then okay. I started to do a bit of street photography a few years back, like I mentioned, but I thought it doesn't, right. there'll be too many things going on in my feed with street, travel, landscape, photos of me. So I decided to start another account just for street photos. So it's more focused. That one, you will totally not see my face if you don't like my face. But it's really <laughs> what I photograph. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, that's but, nice because I, I see yeah. these photos are... Uh, uh, from that trip that you did with William, uh, like, I think, was it last year or the year before, right? Yeah, so last year, I went with Fujifilm on a trip to video for their web series. They had this mm. series of travel videos on their YouTube channel. You can still mm. check it out, it's still there. 
So I went to okay. Myanmar with William and another right. videographer, Albert. So uh. I posted a lot of Myanmar photos, mainly because I took a lot of photos on that trip and really, really okay. learned a lot from that trip. And after right. that, my right. parents commented that my photography looks a bit different after that trip. Different in I a see. better uh. way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, I mean, that's, 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 that's definitely good because, uh, um, you know, as such, you know, we always try to uh, try to advocate in terms of like, if let's say you want to improve on uh, photography, you know, you you can always uh, get in touch with, let's say, the photographer mm -hmm. that you are uh, interested to learn a bit more on. Because I think um, it's only through uh, interactions and also through, let's say, um, through, let's say, learning uh, on a more personal basis that you actually get to improve. Mm -hmm. Because... We can read up as much as possible or we can even uh, look through books and stuff. But I think the most practical way to really learn and to improve something is to go to somebody who you think that you can learn from. And then from there, you know, um, you get some tips and tricks. And of, of course, you know, you have seen the improvement in your photography, which is a good thing. So mm. buy more lenses. <laughs> <laughs> So far, you only got two lenses, right? I remember because you, you have one kit lens. I have right? a lot now. Okay. So I got, have a lot of okay, lenses okay, now. Very good. <laughs> uh, I started okay. with the kit lens, the 1855. Then okay. I bought I bought the. Is it 55 to 200? The XT series. So that ah, I can okay. shoot further. Yes. Then okay. I, I bought the 35 F1.4, which I struggled for very long and I keep discussing with you. Should I buy the, F, the F2 or F1.4? <laughs> Then uh, most recently I bought the 56 F1.2. Yay! Yeah, that one is really very exciting, very nice. <laughs> yeah, yes, I thought yes. for very long, but finally I bought it. Finally, finally. That's good, that's good. Okay. Uh well, I mean, uh let's let's go into um the topic uh in terms of mm. you know uh shooting. Uh well as you can see, you know, the the shots that you know for your style of uh posting into uh Instagram. And my style is a little bit different. So, you know, mm. yours concentrate. I mean, if let's say we are talking about your personal one, you know, you have a certain palette, you know, uh, mm. like a certain format, in fact, you know, as to how you present your, your Instagram, you know, and for traveling, you know, the same thing where you go by, uh, you go by the destination that you travel uh, mm. on. Whereby for mine, because mine, uh, I started. I started um, using Instagram back in uh, November two twenty ten. So it's if you count by the year, it's about it's about ten years of using Instagram. Yeah, yeah because uh, because Instagram itself, um, I uh, Instagram actually just uh, came out onto um, as a mobile app, right? Only towards uh, two thousand and ten. You know, but it started off as something else. Then, you know, uh, it started as a as a rival or a uh, similar platform as uh, Foursquare. I'm sure some of you might have heard of it. Some of you have not. But you can tell how relic I am if you heard <laughs> of Foursquare. And you know, um, so so they realized that it's uh, it's another platform which is similar, which is called Blurb. Okay, but Blurb itself, they say that it's the the, the creators find it too similar. So that's why they decided to reinvent the entire um, the the entire platform to be more photo centric, and that's how Instagram sort of came about, you know. And uh, of course, it started in San Francisco, and of course now it's been uh, you know bought over by Facebook already lah. So that's why you know uh, you see that uh, the the updates and stuff is getting a lot recently. So as you can see from my uh, my Instagram feed, usually I concentrate a lot uh, based on uh, three things, of course, you know, um, in terms of like food, uh, uh, travel, and also, you know, uh, certain uh, certain things which I just find interesting for like, for example, street photography. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a bit messy, to be very honest. And I've actually thought about, you know, really separating uh, my photography, my my actual work photography, like street photography as one account, and you know, the rest of the nonsensical stuff as the other one. But 
I realized that you know I'm, I'm a bit too lazy to do that. So so everything is lumped into one account now. But I think I think it's I, I think it's it's fun because end of the day for um for this um uh, Instagram account, it's your account. So mm. you do whatever you want to it, right? Rather than you know having oops sorry having to um having having to uh worry about like oh how is it but of course there are some there are some uh there are some uh instagrammers who are very particular about how they want to present their account and stuff so um so it's it's really up to you to you know to to personalize how you want to showcase your work right okay mm. so uh perhaps what you can do what we can do is uh, evelyn you have something to show with regards to with regards to how you know you start prepping you know mm. for um this uh, for your shoe and then you know we'll bring we'll bring everybody across uh, how mm. you start from prep you know to um to photography and then to processing and then to posting right mm. okay. okay so yeah let me just bring up what you're gonna show yes okay so can you tell me a little bit more about uh the research that you do before you actually go into a shoot yeah okay so before i travel or if i shoot in singapore i'll always research that location how the photos look like so i will go to instagram and search the location tag like in this case i'm going to new zealand to the mount cook national park the hooker valley trail so i wanted to see what are the photogenic spots where i can take photos at and what kind of outfits should i wear because I like to photograph the location and I also like to have myself in the location. So okay. this one is by the location tag. I will look at the mm. top photo, but I will also look at the recent because mm. recent is more representative and raw and unedited. Mm. The top ones, as you can see, is like all super good quality and I think a lot of light, which may not I be see. the true representation. So I will also check yeah. out the recent. Like you right. can look at what's relevant and just scroll through. In this case, I'm going in the season that's more like on the right hand side. So a bit okay. more dullish, yellowish, greenish. And then from mm. here I see like this man wearing a red beret or a red cap. I think it's really eye catching and it pops against the landscape. So right. in my choice of outfit, I chose red. It's also my favorite color. And it really okay. just pops up against the landscape. Okay, I, I have a question here. I have, a, yeah. I have a question now. So let's say, for example, yeah, I'm I'm sure New Zealand was a personal trip, right? Correct, it was a holiday. Yeah, remember, personal right? trip. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So the thing is this: if let's say for every for let's say for every location that you research, you know, you decided mm -hmm. that oh, I need different colors. I need different colors mm -hmm. for different scenery. Do you bring like a whole wardrobe of stuff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Wow. Yeah. Your, your, your husband must be Is your husband <laughs> complaining? <laughs> yeah, so actually the New Zealand trip was something like a pre-wedding shoot, which we right. do on our own. So I shoot mm. using a tripod, using Fuji from camera. So okay. I, I brought along two wedding gowns, he brought along one suit. And all right. this could fit into his one luggage, including his own personal clothes. But my luggage was just full of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was full of impractical clothes because I didn't expect right. the summer to be so cold. So a I lot see. of dresses right. that I brought can't really right. wear because it was right. too cold. Okay. But okay. but for this photo it was cold, but I had a jacket on. For the purpose of the photo, I just removed the jacket for a while for the photo. Uh okay. So actually this is this done on a tripod and remote shooting or was it uh, like you know, was, was your husband behind the scene? Just press the button and then say, "Okay, it's done." You know. Okay, this one my husband, but the next one I have is tripod. This one, so okay. I was alone in Seoul, and it right. was winter. Right. It was the coldest month in the year, January. Mm. And okay. another tip for y'all is to wear clothes with pockets because you will be using your remote control, and you need somewhere right. to hide your handphone after you click the remote. Or it's also right. a good way to hide like your lens cap or any small things. Yeah. So my setup is like this, just the tripod and myself. Okay. And I, I use the tripod for a lot of my shoots because I travel alone for, for my own trips, like personal or work trips. 
Two right, I have right, right. for tripod. One is for the camera and then one for the mobile phone. Depends right. on where I go and how much time I have, I will decide which one to bring along. Yeah, actually that's true because uh I, I remember you uh because I, I think I remember you worked in the aviation industry. So sometimes your travel schedule can be quite crazy and the time that you get to spend in um the destination yeah. actually is quite limited, right? Yeah. So okay. I usually have a few hours of layover in a in that place or I have one night. Uh, but usually it's very, very short. Even I though see. it's very short, I still want to chong. Uh. <laughs> so I will still go and shoot. But if you okay. don't have a tripod, you can also ask for help. So I like okay. to ask strangers overseas to help me take photos. Uh, very brief, eh? <laughs> if you're if you're a girl traveling alone, you should be aware and observe that person or that group for a while first. If they look mm. like they are locals or tourists and pretty safe doing their own things, then can approach them. So okay. I usually observe a while to see who they are. And I usually choose right. people who have like a camera, DSLR, okay. so that they know how to use my camera. More pro at so, taking the angles also. So, uh, I mean, in such a case, would you actually like preset everything for them? Then you ask them to take you, uh, you know, like you tell them where to stand. This is where I'm going to be. Can you just have me take a photo from there? Do you, do you do that? I'm not so particular because very demanding for that person. <laughs> so if someone doesn't take a good shot, I will just wait a while and ask another person to take. Okay. But so far, it's quite okay. Yeah. Actually, the okay. first photo, I was leaving this place already. This is in Seoul at Iwa mm. Women's University. I was already uh, packed up and uh, all ready to go, but I right. saw this spot. Then I thought, I, I should have a picture here. So I okay. I pass my phone to someone to take. Uh, it's a group of Vietnamese girls who traveled to Seoul mm. to catch a K-pop band concert. So while mm. this friend was taking using my handphone, her other friend took this shot using her own camera. And then oh, okay. it's also a very nice angle and she airdropped right. to me. So originally oh, I, was, nice. I was just standing up without my red jacket. But right. after that, the girl told me maybe you should try holding this red jacket because it adds a color contrast. So people wow. with DSR cameras, they really know their stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but uh, I mean, for for me, I don't really take pictures of myself, so usually I, I don't have such a problem. But uh, I mean, sometimes it's is but it's it's good for you know viewers to know how mm -hmm. uh, you can approach strangers or you know people who. Uh, like certain criteria that you look for just to you know for okay. help to, to take photos yeah which I, I think that this photo and the one that uh eventually uh the other one that you took i think it was, i mean the other one that the uh the stranger helped you to take i think this is very nice yeah mm. it's, it's it's quite interesting yeah, yeah. Okay. i had my next one and she still helped me position like one knee higher okay. it was all like by them very particular this group yeah very good <laughs> I see, I see. Okay. But I mean, this is for Seoul, right? So, uh, mm. like, how about other countries where, let's say, for example, language might really be a problem? Have you ever encountered that? Okay. Or just gesture. Usually just gesture. I, usually, I offer help first. I don't ask them to help right. me. So, I will mm. ask them, uh, do you want help in taking the photos? Most of the time, right. they will say yes. If okay. they say no, then you just ask them back, can you help me take a photo? If they reject, then you can always find someone along the way. But so far, no language okay. issues. Yeah, I can just okay. gesture. Uh, okay, because I'm, I'm sure, uh, I mean, it's in, in this day and age, um, because, okay, <clears throat> pre-COVID-19, okay, mm. uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, I mean, air travel is, you know, relatively cheap, you know, and everybody gets to, you know, uh, like just buy an air ticket and you know book yourself an accommodation and off you go on the trip you know and usually it can be solo it could be with friends but uh, I think oftentimes as AV photographers you know um, they find it difficult to entrust you know the camera to another person and much less a stranger so it is also uh, it's quite a challenge for you especially you know to to you know, to go and pass your camera to somebody hoping that that person knows how to handle it and, and then, you know, helping you to take a shot, you know, and then 
hopefully and return and hopefully to return the camera without like just taking the thing and then run away yeah i think i think that's the biggest fear for uh most, really? of, uh, I mean, most of solo yeah yeah it is it is you know really? when, when i travel when, when i travel yeah. also i i tend to be uh, really cautious about uh how i would handle um cameras to people so usually what i either do is I pass them a relatively cheaper camera because I always carry about two to three cameras, right? So oh, the phone cool. one, the phone camera, definitely I had to keep with me because that's my communication tool. Uh, usually I just pass them, uh, you know, uh, I, I have uh, this um, S, uh, this S X seventy, uh, seven, uh, mm. I think it's X seventy, which is a point and shoot, yeah, which is a point and shoot camera, which gives till today uh, I I still love that camera because it's it's one of the most compact. Uh, cameras mm. around of course there's a pre, uh, there's already a, a successor to it but you know i still have the x70 but that one is one of the best cameras to just pass it to somebody asking oh can you just help me to snap a picture you know and then take already then that's about it yeah so i mean so these are some of the shooting tips that you know um for travelers okay but for me uh my shooting tips actually uh stems from uh posting food shots Okay, like going to cafes and 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 what I usually do is, um, you know, I would actually uh, find cafes that uh, will give me the best kind of aesthetic because end of the day you have to remember um, you can actually put it up onto uh, Instagram and of course for Facebook as well. But for me, I usually <coughs> uh, usually I would just um, I'll just uh, what do you call that? Uh, try to keep it to uh, Instagram because I find that Instagram um, with all the hashtag and and uh, I mean the the way it's being shared, you know, uh, information being shared, uh, it's it's actually a lot more engaging as compared to uh, Facebook because Facebook has so much security uh, restrictions, right? So you no, know, not everybody is able to see what what you want to show them. So uh, some of the shooting tips for you know for viewers who likes to shoot food like me you know um always look for the lighting okay <clears throat> uh use natural light if as, as much as possible you know uh for me like for example you know when i was in melbourne uh for for people who goes uh who has went to melbourne i'm very sure you have heard of this cafe called loon uh so loon itself uh has this most awesome um bakery stuff okay their croissants their you know, yeah, I um, want to try. <laughs> it's very minimalistic, yeah. right? It's just like a yes, set of concrete place the croissants there. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, it's, it's, it is a, some sort of a warehouse, art, artistic looking place. Okay. Uh, so everything is very stark, very industrial. Okay. Uh, the good thing about Loon is that it has a, a lot of big windows. So uh, for me, right, whenever I go into a cafe or uh, a restaurant <clears throat> usually i'll always ask uh two things one is uh is photography allowed you know as, as you know these days some uh some people are i mean some restaurants and uh you know they are very particular about how their uh food is being presented so there's a lot of people who waste a lot of time shooting their food and then not enjoying the food and when the food turns cold they start to make the complaint about you know things like that so usually i'll usually will ask for permission if let's say it's possible to uh if is uh, photography even allowed if there is okay that's good second thing I'll, I'll actually ask and look for is to look for is to look for a spot where i can where there's natural light okay so for thankfully for loon it's it it's it itself you know is lighted in certain ways so you know you can actually find spots to take photos or uh but i know sometimes you know um lighting itself may not be a uh may not be something that you can control so what happens if let's say you can't control the lighting right so for me uh usually i would uh suggest two ways one if you have natural lighting okay take a wider shot okay show more show more stuff uh and you know because you, you get to see the context of the shot because later on when you crop the shot or when you are posting it on instagram it actually looks nicer but what if you encounter a, a situation where you know you go to a cafe 
the all the lights are just down lights you know there is no there is no um there is no proper natural lighting or lighting that is nice enough actually my suggestion would be to shoot close yes okay so a lot of people is so afraid to crop in close for the shot because they want to show everything right you know uh for food usually we want to showcase a flat leg so that you see all the dishes and stuff yes it can be done if you have good lighting and you don't have a down light that casts shadow you know on your body or your or your camera when you're holding it above the food so my suggestion is take a few angles okay find the most appropriate angle if you really cannot find a lighting that is nice enough just go in close on the shot yeah you know so that you can actually get uh, you can actually get uh, a focus point okay like for example this delectable muffin i hope everybody had your dinner already but uh, this uh this this muffin itself was uh, one of the one of the really enjoyable ones that i had when i was in melbourne okay and, uh, okay actually, okay the light is actually coming from the top you know there's a down light okay mm. and then um on the left of the photo is actually the uh, open open concept bakery where there's a lot of fluorescent light yeah so so there's a there's, there's a few like mixed lighting that's going around so this one i believe i was using the uh xt30 the uh the little giant uh which i uh, usually use for travel um to to take so you know with uh with with that kind of mixed lighting you know the sensor is able to you know still be able to produce really uh really vivid uh what they call rendition of you know the big the 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 big stuff there so this this is really something that uh we want to impart to you know uh photographers who wants to shoot food want to shoot uh want to shoot uh really really uh uh intriguing photos for your instagram feed okay don't be afraid to go in close okay and don't be afraid to you know to to want to crop in later yeah because um the, the main thing is you want to showcase a focal point so for me i choose the muffin to be a focal point yeah so that's why so that's why you know this was sort of um what do you call it? get rid of certain lighting problems because like i said i don't set up i don't do any particular uh like i bring my lights to a certain cafe to shoot you know and yeah so again, uh, one of the other shooting tips that you can do for Instagram, okay, or for your own, for your own uh, pleasure, <clears throat> is instead of let's say having just a plain dish that you put across, okay, you can always incorporate uh, human elements like somebody holding holding the plate for you. You know, it's it's to make it more, uh, it's to make it more humanized. You know, not so clinical. Yeah, yeah because that's your food, personal um, yeah, exactly right. I mean, you you yourself, you you shoot you shoot a lot of food. You visit a lot of cafes and restaurants. So I I believe sometimes you also will borrow friends' hands uh, to hold up yeah. food, a food, chopstick or fork, you know, to to make it look more appealing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for for example, like this shot that you're seeing right now, it's it it would have been a um what they call a very clear cut shot of a bowl of of a uh, fruit muesli on a marble table but i thought it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit clinical so i decided to ask a friend to just help me to hold the bowl you know so it adds to a certain uh yes to a certain uh dimension so for for yourself um for yourself how, how how about your own experience in terms of like let's say shooting food or shooting uh like shooting things that interest you food now i don't do so much really because I used to shoot food every time when I go with my friends until <laughs> maybe they want to really eat the food, don't need to take so many photos. <laughs> so now when I go with my friends, usually it's just group photos. I don't really take food anymore. But for the photos that you show, right, I got mm. a question like, when do you choose to take the side profile? Is it only for food that has like a certain height and texture? Then what mm. if I'm eating alone and there's no hand model? Do you hold your own plate and then you shoot from the top? Uh, actually, it's interesting that you ask this. Um, yeah, sometimes I have to. Uh, if let's say 
uh, I find the food interesting and I want to document it. Okay, mainly it's just for my own, uh, it's just for my own record that I've eaten here uh, and I find that this food is quite interesting. I would, um, you know, just take it, take it on my own. Uh. Uh, as to your question is, do I use, when do I decide whether I should take a top down or I take a side? Actually, uh, whenever I take shots, I would do a few angles to try out uh, what kind of lighting, what kind of presentation itself is still, uh, is, is the best eventually. Because at the end of the day, I don't post a series of the same product or the same food. I usually just choose one, which I think is uh, the nicest. Or I will feature an ingredient within the, um, within the dish itself that I want it to stand out. Yeah. So of course, uh, while while we are while while we are at it, uh, we have John Wee. Hi, John. Uh, John Wee said, when you walk into a cafe, do you look for a focal picture to showcase the dish, or do you shoot a set of photos to do so? Well, uh, I mean, okay, I I don't really visit a lot a lot of cafes, but uh, to me, cafes uh, when I go in, okay, I would. Uh, do a little bit of research like what Evelyn does when she do research for her travel. You know, I, I will go on to Instagram to find out like, okay, what what are the what are the photos that is uh, that has been taken there? Okay, what is the strong point? Whether is it the ambience or is it the food or is it the uh, uh, you know the decor? And I will shoot a series of it. For example, uh, let's say for example. Uh, Wakey Wakey. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. Uh, it's actually located in uh, at the concourse uh, at Long Beach Road. So Wakey Wakey has really beautiful exterior, very tall, um, very tall glass um, doors. You know, op really open concept. And from there, you know, uh, we'll, I'll take the outside. Then from there, you know, it's all wooden, uh, wooden tables and chairs. And uh, so it's, it's a series whereby I capture from ambience to the to to the dishes itself. But uh, if you ask me, it's it's really very varied because some restaurants or some cafes um, do have one or two uh, focal point, which is their ingredients. Like for example, uni, right? In a Japanese in a Japanese uh, restaurant where they serve omakase, they will serve you individual pieces of um, sushi so those are both focal points you know so um it's, it's really very hard to say which one to showcase but uh in general i would say just use your camera take a few perspective from an overall shot to focal points and then from there you know uh, you can choose which one to post later on right okay uh so let's let's move on so, um, so for Evelyn, you are going to tell me a little bit more about <clears throat> this next shot that you have put up. Mm, so, I will share a few travel photos that I've taken. The one mm. that you are seeing on the screen now is from my most recent trip to New Zealand. Uh, this day, it was super gloomy and suddenly the weather just cleared up. And this spot right. is a stop super point actually. It's called Mirror Lake. But there were ripples in the lake. I think because there were some ducks swimming in that lake, so I couldn't get a very clear reflection and I didn't have time, a lot of time at that stopover because we had to move on very quickly to the next place. So right. I decided to use a wide angle. This was using the 816mm lens and I okay. used the brightness as a framing plus some right. sun. I really like sunburst. I think you can see that from a bit from my Instagram feed. So there is yes. like a focal point, there's a sunburst, there's a mountains, and then you have like nice branches to frame it. And the wide mm -hmm. angle really gives it a more immersive and dramatic feel to it, I find. Mm. Okay, okay, that's nice. Then this the is other the, one... This is, just thought that one was in New Zealand, right? Yeah, this is New Zealand. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. I think the, the mood also plays a big part in the photos that I take. Like this photo mm. that you see taken in Seattle Public Library, I flew mm. for I think 15 plus hours straight. I was working on a flight and after I touched down, I couldn't check in to the hotel because the room was not ready. I touched down in the morning I had to check in after 3 p.m. So there was like six plus hours that I had to go out, but I still chong. Uh. So I go out, walk around and shoot. 
And at this library, the architecture is really very beautiful. You see the lines from the windows and it's very high. Mm. I think 10 stories high. So I took a lot of shots from the basement until the level 10. All kinds of wow. like people really bold the whole architecture and all. But my favorite photo has to be this one where the light hits this man reading because it's like okay. a natural spotlight. And it to me, it shows me that kind of quiet moment that the man mm. has with like it's really a peaceful moment that he's focusing there. It's just him and the book. And this okay. picture to me just shows that. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Usually I take more brighter photos, but that day yes. I was tired. So maybe I went for this kind of more, more moody look. I don't know. Do you does your book play a part in your photos? Uh actually it does. Uh I think a lot of um I mean AV photographers uh may not understand like sometimes why they are getting certain shots and why they are not getting certain shots, even though they might have done or shoot at the same place for some time. Actually, to be very honest, you know, your own personal, um, your own personal uh, energy level, mood, you know, all this plays a part in, when you take a photo. So like, for example, you know, um, I remember I went to Japan uh, once, uh, back about maybe three, four years ago, and it was uh, it was a very bad time for me uh, personally at that point in time. So the shots that I took during that time were all really, really moody. You know, there's no happy shots. It's just really very, um, what do you call that? Very uh, sad, you know, very lonely, very um, shots that is like uh, definitely not, normal how how normally i would shoot you know for street photography uh but it kind of reflects you know the kind of uh, emotion and mood that i have at the point in time so mood mood itself you know plays a very big part uh as well as also you know energy like for example you know when you are when you are uh you know when you're tired you know you you tend to not to mm -hmm. be able to concentrate on certain things so you may miss out on details or you know your shots may not come out as as what you wanted Right, so it is is apparent in this, but I think, you know, it plays a good, it, it plays a, it plays a very uh, interesting viewpoint because you know such shots are really hard to come by, and how you are able to capture this, uh, you know, even when you're tired, is actually quite amazing. Do you do a lot of editing for this? Do you edit, uh, this? Mm, not a, bring not out? a lot of editing. Ah, yeah. uh, because you see the okay. right side is quite dark. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I never do a lot of editing. Usually my photos, awesome. I don't edit super a lot. Awesome, yeah. awesome. That's nice. Okay. I have the next one. This is also ah. Seattle. So this is the Seattle wheel. Uh, I took right. some normal shots. Then I look for alternative framing. It's when I saw these locks on the fence. Then I was actually mm. shooting it. But then I saw the wheel behind and it was like, the evening hour, so the sun casted a really nice glow on the metal lock mm. in the foreground. So mm. also also how you can play with perspective and not just the usual shot, you also try to get your own perspective shot. Right. Okay. That's nice. Then I have this one, it's from the Fuji Phone Web series to Myanmar. Yeah. So okay. we go on a beach to take a boat to another coastal area. And the beach okay. is just very fast and empty, nothing. Right. <laughs> I saw this okay. monk and the sea behind. This, I thought it's interesting because I seldom see monks on the beach. <laughs> Not sure about <laughs> you, but he caught my attention and he was like <laughs> using his phone and his hands to take something. I don't know whether it was the moon or the sun. So I thought it was okay. a pretty interesting angle. Then I just took right. a shot. And I captured more of the sky because there was a really nice gradient going on. This one is just mm. enhanced. The real thing really just looks like this. So I thought I it's see. really interesting to show the various colors in the sky and what the monk was doing. So oh, also don't need to, yeah. Yeah, the, the lighting is actually quite beautiful. This is taken during evening time, near evening? Yeah, going to be sunset already, evening time. Wow, wow, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, this, this sort of uh, framing is actually quite, uh, I would say very, almost fine art kind of framing whereby, you know, you don't follow exactly like the one third kind of rule to, you know, to, to place the subject matter. But, you know, this is this is really something that is very uh, captivating. Yeah. 
I, I, I love how you just use, you know, the, the monk on the beach to, you know, just to bring out that focal point to draw everybody in on the attention. Then after that, you see the entire space of it. Actually, I got a question like, why? I mean, if this is a beach, right? Why, why didn't you shoot it in a landscape kind of format? I, I thought you might have shown, uh, oh. might have shown a very different uh, perspective. Because got nothing else on the beach. It's like emptiness. <laughs> then it's but so isn't much. It, isn't like, it nice? I prefer the sky compared to the sand. I was really trying to catch all the colors in the sky. If I don't take in portraits, I, I don't think mm -hmm. I can capture everything. And this was taken on a 56 mm lens. So I was oh. a bit of distance away from him. I'm not using a wide angle lens for this. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Another one from Myanmar is this, we went to a pottery village and when mm. I knew I was really excited because my CCA was pottery when I was in secondary school. So mm. I was excited to shoot for a craft that I know, like I know how things are being made. So I right. shot with even more energy and passion. Then okay. say a normal shot, I also took a top down shot. This was using, mm. I think I was tiptoeing and using the tilt screen to see top down how it looks like. And just like there's like a triangle formation in her hand. So yes. there's some sticks mm. and lines there and some circles mm. on the body. So it's mm. an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I also think that, you know, um, I mean, for me, when, I look, uh, when you crop it, let's say, for example, for uh, when you post on Instagram, when you crop it, right, you know, uh, I would I would choose a square crop you know, to just showcase the pottery and then the colors of mm. what the lady is wearing, you know, will actually stand out quite a lot because it's contrasting against the, the monotonous gray uh, gradient at the back. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I mean, for, for shots that you want to post on Instagram, there's a few ways that you can generate a consistency look. Okay. So for me, when I look at, uh, when I look at this uh, Instagram, Okay, uh, for people who, okay, again, back to shooting food. Uh. So, uh, you know, consistency for me is uh, mainly the colors and also uh, it can also be an angle as well. So uh, this is like taken, um, uh, sometimes I prepare lunch, you know, so before uh, I would just take out my camera and just shoot uh, my lunch. So a certain consistency that you can see is that you know, uh, the angles of the of the bento box. You know, the colors. For me, I, for me, food itself it has to be colored. You know, it has to it has to be you know uh, advertising. So the color must stand out for me. Yeah. So, uh, like you know, uh, so, like for uh, In who actually asked, do you buy food based on looks or taste? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um to be very honest food uh food taste comes first lah, okay then uh it's really up to you to present it whether is it uh is it something uh, that is instagram worthy i mean i mean sorry to say end of the day you know uh, i i don't really go for likes uh i don't really go for likes on my uh i would usually buy the food that I like to eat and then after that uh, then after that I will choose to post the photo whether is it a good photo or not yeah but I as you can I mean uh, for, for a lot of friends who knows me you know uh, I don't usually post everything that I take you know uh, out of like a hundred photos maybe I'll just post one yeah so that's that's just me okay so again consistency with the looks yeah, so um, you can also you can also um, choose a very different way of presenting food. Uh, if let's say right now everybody's at home, right? Okay, find food that is uh, interesting in geometry. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, like for example, uh, rice dumpling is uh, the 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 season is coming. You know, so uh, recently I just managed to get one, and, and I started to just play around with colors, play around with the shape, and this is lighted from the kitchen. So there's no additional lighting. So you can see there's multicast of uh, soft shadow, like, you know, but this is as natural as it comes. Yeah. So, or if not, you can always play with patterns if you're posting, uh, you're posting on Instagram, like for example, like this. Uh, of course, this was when 
when uh, restaurants are still uh, before the before the circuit breaker. So uh, you know something so random, but there is a certain pattern to it. Yeah. So you you can always try out these ideas whenever uh, you are using your Instagram to post. And uh, you can choose it. This all these pictures, right? Works well. Whether is it square crop, is it a landscape, or is it a um, is it a portrait crop? It will works the same because end of the day, you are basing it on um, the concept of a repeat pattern or a uh, certain focal point. Okay. Okay. And of course, again, you know, uh, right now we're going to show. We are going to. Uh, share a little bit more on selection and curating your shots. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think this is also very important, uh, especially for Instagram, because um, we can post a lot of stuff. But end of the day, you know, you you want you want certain you want your your photos or your posts to stand out. Uh, so there's usage of hashtags and location tags. You know, this will help. But end of the day, it's still about uh, what kind of photos that you put up on your feed that will, you know, attract the uh, the kind of uh, attention uh, from people. Like for example, for Evelyn, you know, she has been putting up uh, videos and photos of her workout. You know, so right now, I believe a lot of people is uh, attracted to, you know, your workout videos. And, and most of them are also doing their own fitness at home and stuff. Am I right to say? Actually, I only started the workout videos during the circuit breaker period because I was doing workout at home on my own for two to three years already. Is the HIIT mm. high intensity interval training workout? I follow a program. So during the okay. training, a friend texted me to ask if I can help her do a class mm. for charity. So that was my first okay. ever live fitness class. And mm. after that, somebody else saw that video that I did. So he also approached me to ask whether I can do a charity class for them. Yeah. Mm. And after that, I thought it's a good way to document down. And also, if people are keen to learn, then I can also video down some stuff to share. And when I video, actually, I, I do it in a better form. So it's good for me also. I'm more conscious about my <laughs> form. And yeah. Right. It's, uh, Okay. Well, I mean, we, we have uh, some questions over here uh, from Benny. Hi, Benny. Uh, okay, so Benny actually asked, like, is there any particular film simulation that both of us use? Uh, for me, I, I use, uh, you know, Velva uh, or, you know, um, this Provia, mainly a lot, and then uh, Classic Chrome. This, these are the three that I use most of the time. For black and white, it's just... Uh, it's, it's just, you know, the normal black and white, you know, that, uh, that I use. Um, or if not, I just convert later on, you know, in post editing. Yeah, but mainly it's always Velva and Provia. How about, how about uh, Evelyn? I shoot mainly in Provia, but I have this particular okay. setting on the camera that I really like to use, which is that bracketing option. So I can mm. customize three filters, three film simulations in that bracketing. So one shot, mm. then three film scene will come out in the exact same shot. So I usually I set it to Fovia, Velvia, the Vivid one, and Classic Chrome. Mm. Just ah, to okay. see how the colors turn out. But if it's sunrise, sunset, I will choose Velvia, like more vivid colors. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, mm. recently I've been using Velvia to capture uh, this uh, sunrise as well. So the colors will, will tend to come out better. So I don't even need to edit at all, you know, it's just to make, just to check whether the contrast or, you know, the shadows are there. Yeah. Uh, well, we also have another question uh, from Santo. Hi, Santo. Uh, what's your tips for a great picture in Singapore? <laughs> mm. Yeah, recently I've been editing some photos from my archive since unable to go out to shoot. Uh, what I edited are like landmarks and I really like sunset. And I can't wake up for sunrise in Singapore. So I like to choose those sunset pictures with some iconic skyline in Singapore. And recently, mm. I just did that thing where I pieced two separate pictures together. So it was of mm. the Marina Bay Sands, that skyline. On the left side, there's the Helix Bridge, that's MBS. On the right side, it's all the hotels and the floating platform. Mm. And when mm. I shot it, I didn't realize I could 
take a panel shot. So I took like two separate photos on the left, on the right. Then recently I found out how to stitch photos together and later mm. upload it on Instagram as like a long panel form. So I was really excited when I found that technique. So I quickly share on my Instagram caption just so that others can right. know also. And hopefully they can cut down on the learning time required because I spent a few mm. hours learning it. But through that caption, maybe people can learn in 10, 15 minutes. But mm. we can all build on each other's idea because after that, Ron commented to say he has a better idea to even cut down the time. So when you think <laughs> you have an idea, actually people can build on your idea and then you can learn and grow from there. So that's yes, also yes. one beauty of connecting on Instagram to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, on average, right, how many hashtags do you put in, in one in one Instagram post? Actually, I'm, I'm very curious. I think the maximum is 30. So I will put in about 25 to 30 relevant hashtags. Oh, so wow, that's <laughs> a lot, man. I copy everything in my notepad. So if I need it, I just paste right. it. According to the theme, like if it's Singapore related, if it's travel related or that location related. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, I, I also believe because of all this hashtag and of course, uh, certain tagging of, you know, uh, of, of certain accounts that, you know, it got you noticed for uh, those uh, very uh, Singapore based agencies that you uh, got featured on on their Instagram feed, right? So, uh, how I mean, any any comments on that? Would you actually mm. encourage people to tag, you know, all these people to uh, to to get noticed? Yeah, I think one thing is you need to get your photos noticed in a way. If not, if you keep posting, nobody if they are not your connections or friends, right? Mm. I don't think Instagram will suggest to the mm. viewer. Mm. So one thing to help yourself is also to try to get your photos out there so that more people can appreciate your photo and your style. Then okay. also can join communities. Like mm. I go for mm. photo walks with some communities. That's where you can also get some exclusive previews to event sneak peeks. So okay. I remember I had this photo at Changi uh, Jewel. So they just mm. opened and there was that Skynet thing. So I was alone standing on the Skynet and I think that one got mm. reposted quite a lot of times yes. because it was a very new attraction. Not a lot of people yeah. have been there to take photos. Mm. So I think having that first mover advantage does help if you have uh, <laughs> give you access to a certain event or function, then you can get your okay. photos circulated. I more. see. Yeah. Yeah, actually that, that shot was very nice actually. I, I think I also I also commented uh PM you about it, right? It was quite uh quite an interesting shot. Yeah. Uh, I must thank the photographer who took it for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh we have one question from uh Hanim that uh addressed to you. It says, uh what's your go-to lens when you're traveling, especially when you're on the road? Usually when I travel, I always use that 18-55 lens. It's very versatile because I'm very, very lazy. You see, I bring mm -hmm. a lot of things, but for work trips, I don't bring a lot of things. So I like to But you still bring like, two tripods, right? You still bring two uh, tripods along, right? If it's work trip and very short, I will just bring one. Okay. Yeah, but if it's like a holiday, then I will bring both. <laughs> okay. Holiday, okay. got my own luggage space, got my companion's luggage space. Then for mm. New Zealand, I went there to take pre-wedding shoot also. So I took more lenses. I loaned mm. the 816. I think that one is really very good. Uh, yeah. be it for landscape and also for my own portraits also. Um, okay. Then I also like the 35 f1.4 and the 56. <laughs> but most versatile to me is the 1855 because it's really very light. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean personally for me, uh, I think I be I believe I shared before during uh our first uh webcast um <clears throat> on street photography. Right? Usually my gears are all prime lenses. Uh, I'm using all the f2 lens, so you know, um, 23, 23 or 35 usually. Uh, I have an 18, I have a 16 mm as well, and uh, I don't usually carry my longer lens like, um, like the for example, a 56 or the 60. Okay, 60 I will carry because it's it's really small and light, yeah, and it has uh, the 62.4. That one has a macro function, which I love it a lot because sometimes when you are in a situation where you can do portrait, you know, you can use that to shoot. Yeah. So of course, you know, um, 
it's it's uh i mean we shoot very different things so that's why you know your go-to lens and my go-to lens is actually quite different but uh but like i said you know this these are all great lenses from fujifilm which i feel that uh everybody should go and check them out you know once uh it's available you know at the studio for you guys to pop in down yeah so uh we have a we have a someone who is asking uh you know uh daniel daniel is asking is there more camera images or more phone images in our instagram <laughs> mm. okay per personally i will say um i will say about 60 40 60 percent is uh phone phone camera because i mean i i really cannot carry my um camera around all the time especially when you're you, you're at work uh i do like put in a x70 you know in my work bag sometimes but um you know in in the interest of time sometimes you know as for street you know the moment you see something there's no time for you to really just reach in take it out turn it on and shoot so it's just a phone it's just snap and go yeah but for yourself myself or my personal feed actually travel photos mm. mainly on camera because the quality mm. is better i can post a little bit more then mm. for my account it is i think 99 percent is camera yeah <laughs> okay okay yeah it's it's uh it's very interesting because uh i mean when we talk about instagram it's all about instantaneous photography right so a lot of a lot of people will just say that oh you know it's uh it should be it should be phone right but i can i can seriously tell you because uh i mean with <clears throat> uh micro photo cameras you know with all this wi-fi connectivity it's quite instantaneous to be able to just take a photo mm -hmm. and then you know you transfer it directly to your phone and then you can post it up straight away yeah so uh thanks elwin El cop actually actually uh put in a, a very nice link for everybody who is interested in the 1680 thanks elwin yeah you can actually get it from asada <laughs> yeah i hope it's a good deal definitely yeah so so these are these are the you know these are the things that uh, we both use um yeah santo also commented that thank you so much for liking the street shots that i've been posting on the uh this uh circuit breaker team yeah i'll talk about that uh maybe towards the end of this uh session on what's upcoming uh for this project of mine okay so uh let's go back into the topic whereby you know uh before uh, on the selection and curation so on selection and curation we have to remember that you know for instagram posts or you know there is a certain uh, um, there is a certain format that instagram actually adopts so as you can see here the crop of course is one is to one but the pixels that they use okay uh the pixel count is 100 by 100 so you just have to remember that so that's the maximum uh that's the maximum width of a post on instagram so i would actually suggest for everybody to you know just uh, upload the highest resolution that you can because if let's say you if you uh upload anything that's lower than 1080 okay instagram will automatically resize it up for you so that's why sometimes you might see that your the the post that you put up is actually is actually uh not so sharp or this pixelated okay um an example uh, of how i'll usually select and curate uh my shot for instagram okay is that uh uh, for example, this is a, this is a shot from the camera itself. Okay, uh, I was using an X-Pro X -Pro 3, okay, on this. And uh, and I shot it from a top-down position. And the, origi the original um, ratio, uh, I set it as uh, 3 to 2. Okay, this, this is the original uh, ratio. But when I'm posting it, it gives a very different feel the way you select your crop uh, in Instagram or anywhere else, okay, if you are, even if you are posting it on Facebook, right? So, for example, okay, this is the one is to one crop. So, a square crop actually kind of uh, gives a very diff a slightly different feel to the whole picture. Just now, there's a lot of negative space where you just see, you know, two red dots or two red umbrellas, you know, at the side. And uh, right now, when I crop it in to one is to one square, you know, it, it sort of forces the perspective to concentrate a lot more on uh, the space and uh, the dividing of space between the platform uh, before on the pavement and the road 
in contrast to the two um, red umbrellas. Now, uh, in any case, I can also crop it to a I can also crop it to a four by five ratio. Okay, concentrate on the person itself. So different crops gives very different feel to uh, how you present your photos. So if um, so for me, uh, because as as a street photographer, I I I mean I train myself to look at certain composition, uh, uh, you know. So as to not give my so as to give myself a little bit more option when it comes to post processing later on, you know that I will be able to find, I'll be able to find at least a, 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 a proper ratio of cropping to be posted on social media, you know to to showcase what I want to showcase, right? Okay. Then um, how about um, for? Um, how do you actually select and curate uh you know the photos that you want to put Sorry, not sure if I'm lagging. Can you still hear me fine? Can you guys still hear me? I think you can hear me, but I can't really share the screen because Ron is doing the control. But I think his question was, how do I curate and select pictures for Instagram? And I have the same tip, oh, by myself now. Okay, I have the same tip, which is to shoot wider. So I have some photos to show. I also shoot by the three by two ratio. And when it's time to upload for Instagram, I realized that I have to sacrifice either the top part or the bottom part of my picture. So let me see. I, I think I have to wait for Ron to come back before I can share the screen. But usually I will select the photos first before I edit it. So I will actually use the app to transfer my photos from the camera to my handphone. Um, I shoot in JPEG most of the time for a more fast free experience. So I just uh, import the export the photos to my phone and from there I will QC and then See which photos I like. After I select the photos I like, then I will import them into photo editing app to edit and post on Instagram. But when I shoot, I don't really take note of the expiration. Oh, hi Ron, you're back. <laughs> hi, so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was I think your question was about how I select and curate the photos, right? Is it yes, for Instagram? Correct. Mm. Okay, so correct. I some pictures to show. I was just telling them about how you should always shoot wider. Can you see my photo? Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so this photo was taken in Copenhagen. It was a really gloomy day. So there was no sun, the light was pretty bad. But this was the mm. photo that I took. I, I didn't have a, my tripod with me but because I had very short time. If not, I can do a longer exposure for the water to be silky, the reflection to be really creased. But I mm. do with what I have. So this is the photo I took. I think it's in classic chrome. Mm. Then I brighten up the colors a bit. I added a filter. Then I thought, wow, okay, I can upload to Instagram. Then zing, zing, the aspect ratio is off. I had to cut off either <laughs> the top or the bottom. So I chose to sacrifice right. the reflection. So this is right, right. Okay. one example why you should always shoot wider. Right. 
this is this is this uh, is this taken with uh, what what lens do you use to take this? Uh, I think it's also the eighteen fifty five because ah okay. I I really like to travel like especially when I have my work stuff with me. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Then also okay. Copenhagen. So this was like a construction man that I saw and I was observing him for a long while because I really wanted mm. to see his photo. I thought he was pretty interesting on the street and he was wearing this yellow vest which was very eye-catching in that landscape. So I slowly moved closer to him and I took a photo of him. <laughs> but of course, right. you know, because he's staring and then you can see his body language. I don't know whether mm. it's like, what do you want? Or he's posing for me. So I actually mm. asked him, uh, can I take another photo of you? Then he mm. actually smiled. Actually, I don't know whether he understood what I was saying because we didn't communicate mm. first much. Then you can see him smiling a bit. Then I told him, you have a really great smile. Then I moved closer okay. to the shot. So you can see the difference between <laughs> the two shots. He's like really, this one is just smiling, maybe for the photo. Right. This one is like a really mm. genuinely laughing and you can see like the crinkles from his eyes. And his body language is ah. also more relaxed. Okay. Then so I, so between the two shots, so between the two shots, I believe you chose this one uh, yeah. as as the one that eventually that you presented that you're gonna present on your Instagram, right? Yes, but I haven't posted yet because then I <laughs> Yeah, I'm very bad. I just edit and then I keep it first. But I think when I oh. present it, maybe I will crop it to a square because the thing mm, okay. is don't really need to see la. They are quite distracting. I see. I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, you gave yourself, you know, you gave yourself uh, some, basically some uh, cropping room, you know. So again, uh, you know, again, I mean, I in the earlier part, I did mention about like cropping in close or don't be afraid to go in close. Yes, but still you need to observe certain rules, like for example, giving enough headroom, giving in just enough space on the left and right or at, even at the bottom to ensure that if in the event, that you may need to focus in a little bit more on what you're trying to show, or you know, you can you still have the space to crop in, you know. But thankfully, you know, for Instagram right now, it's not just all squares, right? Mm. It's uh, really uh, you're able to post, um, you're able to post landscape and portrait, uh, you know, with with their new uh, improved uh, formats. So I think I think I think it's it's great. But I mean, it's always uh, but as a rule for photography. You know, if you're like me, um, you know, and Evelyn, when we are posting or when we are shooting uh, street shots like this, you know, it's it's very important to give yourself a bit of cropping room just to ensure that, you know, you, you have enough to play with, okay? So, I mean, uh, I have a very similar shot um, of, of, a, of a person, you know, like, like yours. So, allow me to share that. Okay, so it's the same thing uh, where... We, uh, it was this is in Cambodia, right? So I was visiting one of the uh, famous uh, open markets, and uh, for me, like I said, you know, colors and elements uh, make up for a uh, make up for a good photo. And personally, I was just going around the market, you know, trying to find things to shoot, and uh, happens to pass by this lady who is wearing a really beautiful, you know, flower dress, and in contrast to you know all the red stuff that she has in the foreground. You know, I personally feel that you know this this is a really nice photo. So, in fact, to me, uh, I could have chose I I can choose to post this photo as a landscape orientation, or you know, I can always uh, go into crop as a square. You know, so this is this is something uh this is something that you can give yourself options to. So you know um so always remember to give yourself some bit of a cropping headroom so that you you can you know work around. You can work around on the, uh, you know, on the composition. Same thing uh, like this. For me, colors are the ones that really stands out a lot. So, uh, in in this case, you know, uh, shooting this was quite easy. It was very, it was a stationary shot. So I just so happened that you know people has been throwing masks around in Singapore. <laughs> so uh, this is also part of the series that I'm doing in, in terms of uh, documenting the current you know situation. Uh, where face mask is, is being used. Um, yeah, so, you know, again, giving myself a lot of options in terms of cropping it, uh, a landscape, square, or even leaving this as, uh, as, a, as a portrait orientation. Yeah, so 
In fact, um, you know, this uh, Ijun, yeah, hi Ijun. Uh, Ijun, uh, I actually mentioned that you know he finds himself not posting stuff because of the exact situation, uh, like what Evelyn had, you know. So actually, Ijun had a question. He says uh, he's asking, uh, do we always shoot white and crop, or do we prefer to get it right in camera? Ha. Huh. Okay, so this this is very tricky, I must say. Uh, maybe Evelyn, you want to go first? Yeah, to me it's straightforward. It should be right in the camera. <laughs> Because okay, I, I totally photos, agree. Yeah, my photos, I don't take just for Instagram. I may have mm. other purposes for it. So, mm. I mean, while you should shoot, considering the Instagram expect ratio in mind, well, but no need. La. <laughs> yeah, Instagram, <laughs> I think the photo itself okay. is important. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, personally, I mean, as, as, as uh, you know, a uh, professional photographer, it's very important for me to get it right in the camera, you know, so that I can be inspired to do more with it rather than having to, uh, you know, shoot too randomly and try to crop in to find the right shot. Yeah, I think I think that's really important. So like what Evelyn said, which is correct, you know, uh, it's uh, do not don't just shoot for Instagram. You know, have the have have the concept of uh, using it for other other usages so that you can, uh, you know, fully utilize your photo. So for me personally, it's, it's really, uh, it's really getting it right in the camera. Okay. Yeah. I think Natalie has a question to ask if we try Instagram. I think that's where you can add in borders for your photos if uh -huh. you just into the Instagram aspect ratio. I used to do mm. it, but now my feed, okay. is, see the preview is like all nice, nice squares. So if I use Vitagram now, it will introduce some white space in the feed. So for that reason, okay. I use Vitagram now. I see, I see. Yeah, same thing. I I, I don't really use uh, those Vitagrams because um, because the thing is, if I were to be posting a, uh, a, a portrait, I mean a landscape, right? So Instagram will actually uh, automatically um, lengthen i'm not lengthen sorry we'll actually add in this border when you when you click on it but when you are exiting out of the view when you're looking at your grid view the grid view will actually show all squares which is quite nice yeah so adding a whitegram or a, a a border around it actually will might spoil the look of your of your uh feed you know if people are just going in yeah if it's just going into your instagram for the first time looking at your grid and then suddenly there's something jarring unless Unless you've been doing it consistently throughout the entire for your entire posting, then not a problem. Yeah. So, so this is one of the uh, this is one of the things that you can take note of. You know, consistency basically. Yeah. Uh, I have a question from Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Gloria actually asks, um, what do you guys do when you are desensitized to your environment if traveling is not an option like right now? Wow, very deep this question. <laughs> <laughs> um okay personally like I said you know we uh i've been trying to find things to shoot uh it's been difficult but uh you know the, the main thing is to just keep shooting um for me i it's uh it's it's really to find a consistent team you know i've seen instagram shoot uh, or instagram grids that actually just concentrate on shooting a selfie a day you know, every day just put one selfie, you know. But, uh, you know, end of, end of the day, when you look at the entire grid of the feed, it's all, it looks the same. And it kind of looks quite interesting because, you know, there is certain changes or minor changes that actually gives variation. But uh, it, 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 it is because, you know, what this guy used to, uh, what this guy um, wants to portray for his Instagram feed. So this is, this is something of it. So for me, I don't, um, I always try to look at, you know, what uh, some Instagrammers are doing, you know, for their feed, or even sh what they are shooting during, even during this time when uh, when you can't travel, you can't really venture out. You know, is to is to is to generate ideas, you know, to uh, to keep you know your uh, audiences uh, or your viewers uh, engaged. Yeah, uh, I mean, Evelyn, how about yourself? For myself, I haven't been shooting a lot this year actually because like I set up that second account for street, right? But it has been inactive for a while now because I'm still trying to cope with my backlog. 
Like after uh, I shoot on my work trip or my holidays, actually I come back and very tired and I don't have the I discipline see. of sorting it out. So this I CD see. period really is for me to have a mental decluttering so that I have mm. more capacity to take it more and shoot again. So for me, it's more I of see. like the purging and really just clear my archive backlog and edit old photos. So I haven't been okay. shooting much at home this year. But I, I think see. you you have inspired me to take on some personal stay home <laughs> project. Like ah, I don't yes. know. Behind yes, you yes, are those yes. photos of your printouts, like the insects printout. Yes, yes, correct. So uh I mean uh for some home projects that you can do during this time, I mean even towards uh the phase one of our circuit breaker easing, okay, some of the home projects that you can do is um print out some of your stuff for me. It's very important for me to print, uh, to check for quality and also for a certain uh, consistency in the look. So what, what I have done is that uh, during this timing, you know, uh, during this time of uh, stay home, uh, I've been documenting the 50 over days of, uh, 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 what do you call it? The 50 over days of uh, circuit breaker, okay? Uh, so every day, uh, because I was in this certain community and group that is uh, that is uh, uh, asking photographers to to sort of share, you know, a, a picture a day of your circuit breaker. So I've been taking photos every day, uh, and also I thought of like printing them out because uh, you know it's it's actually really nice to print it out. So as you can see from the background, you know, um, these are mm -hmm. I mean I've been putting it up there. For me to track and for me to just play around with the arrangement so that eventually when i want to do uh let's say a, 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 um online showcase of these pictures you know with captions and stories about it you know this this can be done yeah so uh i will i will definitely say that one of the better investments that i made you know was to get was to go and get the uh, sp3 the instax square printer to print this stuff thing out and also uh, managed to get like a whole bulk purchase of um, this uh, Instax Square to be printing during this time. Yeah, so uh, eventually what you can do with the photos is mm -hmm. to, you know, to to, to showcase, uh, you know, on Instagram, on IG story, or even on your post, you know, the number of days of this uh, unique circuit breaker time where you can add in stories and hashtag, you know, for, for, for more. Uh, content engagements, right? Okay. So, uh, how about how about Evelyn for yourself? Myself, uh, I did some self portraits at home, just for uh, fun. Okay. So, so I will share my photo. You can see. It. So yes. I took a series, but I think mm. some tips are uh, one is really to position yourself in front of a large light source. So in this case, I think this photo wasn't edited. Uh, so I'm just standing opposite a large window. There you can okay. see the light in my eyes. It's not enhanced or mm. anything. It's just really coming from the light source. Then okay. try to search on some posts. I'm also using the Fuji remote app to preview and to shoot. So nice. this was okay. using a cloth, a woven fabric that had some holes in it. I'll show you later. Mm -hmm. So I just tried draping the hole over the camera lens at different angles. Mm. So this is actually behind the scene. Ah, and okay, okay. This is the effect. It creates some sort of a more soft and mysterious look to me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Then but if for people like me who don't really know how to pose using your hands, awkward hands, right? You can also hold something like a camera. Even nicer if it's a Fuji film camera. So I tried <laughs> this no small look. And then I tried a smiley look. <laughs> Okay, so just okay. play with different attire and different props. You may feel more comfortable holding something so you can ease in from there. I see. Then okay. I also have photos from our virtual trial shoot yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, so yesterday, uh, Evelyn and I, we decided to just uh, play around uh, to get some, you know, to, to play around uh, using the, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the virtual photo shoot. I need to say, you know, I was directing her um, using the uh, FaceTime and or you know those teleconferencing apps, right? 
And then she basically also has set up uh, the camera on the remote and we try to adjust the focal length to roughly what the phone is showing. And then after that, uh, she has, you know, taken photos of it using the remote, which is hidden somewhere, somewhere in the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So it, it's really pretty fun because mm. like, I really don't know how to pose. So the photographer really has to give very clear directions. You can do this with a buddy. If you're trying to mm. chain up your photography direction still, so he had to tell mm. me certain instructions like tilt or turn, there's a difference. And then your face right. don't move, but your eye moves. So the first <laughs> shot is actually, he said, okay, your face don't move, but your eyes look here. But the angle was really awkward for me. So it ended up, it looked like a glare, but it turned out pretty well, actually. Then the second <laughs> one was a candid shot, I think, because I was laughing. Right. The angle was really yeah, quite yeah. awkward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then this one also candid. So he wanted me to balance with my leg hanging in the air, but I fell in right. So it's all candy uh, moments and it's really pretty fun experience. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. I mean, uh, I mean, for people who is currently bored at home and things like that, yeah. you know, try, try out this virtual photo shoot, you know, with your friends, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if it's possible. Uh, I mean, right now, I mean, if they're using Fujifilm cameras, the, the remote app actually just got an update. So, you know, you can, you can use it for remote shooting, set it on the timer, and then you know a two a two seconds usually is more than enough uh to to capture the shot so the moment it blinks and there's a sound you know then the action comes in it will be captured yeah okay so uh yeah let me just see. okay so um yeah so yeah, it, I mean, uh, with also the very recent uh, Fujifilm update, you know, you can actually use the Fujifilm cameras uh, as a webcam, as what Benny has actually uh, mentioned. Uh, but of course, right now, it's only uh, limited to the GFX and the uh, X-T3 and 4 and X-Pro series for to link up to your, cam to, to your computer as a webcam. But I really hope and I'm sure, you know, Fujifilm has something uh, in mind for the rest of the range of cameras to be used as spread cams. So let's, we can hold out for that. Yeah. So, uh, so far is there, I mean, uh, I hope you have actually answered most of your questions that you have been posting in. And uh, if let's say, you know, if let's say there is, uh, uh, you know, there is any new updates, you know, do keep track uh, on uh, Fujifilm X Club uh, and Fujifilm X Singapore, you know, where we will post Certain notification if let's say there is a new up and coming uh, changes or um, new talks that's coming up, you know, every on, on Saturdays to, uh, to 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 let you know uh, on what uh, certain topics that you guys like to talk about, and also uh, and also, you know, uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram, you know. So uh, Evelyn's one uh, and mine. Uh, is actually shown on this uh, on this uh, slide, and then uh, of course again, you know, thanks so much to uh, Fujifilm X Singapore and uh, uh, for for this uh, opportunity to share on how you can actually up your game in Instagram. Uh, do join us at Fuji uh, Fujifilm Club X because uh, this is where uh, the Facebook page where a lot of us are sharing uh, shots taken with the camera and the lenses, and there are a panel of uh, you know, um, experts and uh, AV photographers who are very good in their genres to be able to un to be able to share with you, you know, certain queries that you have for uh, for you know the interest that uh, for the topics that really interest you. Yeah. So um, I really hope that you enjoy this session. And again, my apologies, you know, for the uh, for the slight technical issue just now. But thankfully, Evelyn. Uh, was hosting the was hosting that session yeah <laughs> so so uh in fact um if let's say there's any questions that uh you guys wants to continue asking uh you can post it on this uh chat in uh, facebook or you can actually go to our individual uh this uh, individual instagram account and then just drop us a direct messaging okay so thank you so much once again and uh, so, uh is there anything else you want to add in evelyn <laughs> thank you for having me again and okay. hope you guys 
do what feels right and what feels good for you during this period. Don't have to yeah. chong and take photos, but really just let your mind and body relax and recharge while we have this time and luxurious, amazing luxurious time to just really reflect and recharge. Yep, agree, agree. Okay, so please stay safe, please stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you uh, on the next session. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, thank Evelyn. You. Bye. Thanks, bye.